I love Chainsaw Man. You love Chainsaw Man. We all love Chainsaw Man. If you've been living under a rock lately, or just forgot your country world password, it's Gojo Please Hollow My Purple 12. Chainsaw Man was the talk of the town. Yes, Chainsaw Man Tuesdays have come and gone, but there's still plenty of content to milk. I mean, talk about. Like most anime, it started out as a manga written by the delightfully odd Tatsuki Fujimoto, who loves women with dominating personalities so much, he's written multiple stories about it. I read the manga last year when the anime was announced, since there were cries of, wow, this is going to be the best anime of all time, or there's no way they're going to be faithful to the source material, or wow, that's another five years in the map dungeon for those poor animators, stuff like that. I read it while I worked and it took me out a week because while the manga is good, it doesn't rely heavily on dialogue and a lot of pages are taken up by heavy metal album covers. To give a quick review, I liked it. Uh, got kind of muddy towards the middle in terms of actually following what the f*** is going on, but it had great moments, stellar characters, and a great resolution that leads perfectly into the next arc of the series. And we only had to wait a year. Well, I had to wait three months. There's an upside to always being late to trends. So part one of the manga is a must read and the anime did a great job adapting it and even gave it its own identity kind of, which I think is important for an anime to do. I'm a believer in anime elevating the source material. That way anime only have a dynamic entry to the series and manga readers get spoiler ammo in case others dare insult Kobeni. Looking at you, TikTok. Keep up the good work. But I'm here today to talk about the future. Or what's happening in manga now at least. Spoilers for the Chainsaw Man manga up to the latest chapter by the way. Because Denji, or horny little chainsaw goblin with a hankering for knockers and mother figures, is arguably not the main character of the series anymore. Believe it or not, the potential new lead of this hot-blooded series is, brace yourselves now, a woman. I'm actually impressed with Fujimoto because he's one of the few mangaka who gets his female characters agency and strength while putting them in the forefront of the action and story. So what if he wishes they all throw a bike at him? I take progress where I can. So this is Asa, or more like the possessed body of Asa. Yeah, for a manga that focuses a lot on the action and gore, it really does present an interesting lore and power system. See, in this world, devils are born out of a fear of a concept. Darkness, zombies, bat, the IRS, whatever you can think of. And the more that concept is feared by living creatures, the stronger the devil is. Also, while devils want nothing more than just eat people, there are ways they can coexist. You can make a contract of a devil by which they have to abide by. A devil can possess a corpse, which makes a fiend. And in Denji's case, a devil can become a heart of a human, who can then use that devil's powers as a hybrid. And whatever the f*** Magma is. But Asa is unique, because as far as I'm aware, again, kind of got lost in the middle there. She's our first example of old school possession exorcist style. She's your typical high school girl with dead parents and antisocial behaviors who is possessed by the war devil of all things. Yeah, the devil who literally embodies a fear of war is possessing this f***ing nerd. But in the context of the story, I say it actually works. Even though war is always on the mind of the populace and seems to be an eternal part of the human experience, the war devil doesn't seem all that strong. Compared to Makima, who's a control devil, and both being considered horsemen of the apocalypse, her feats compared to Makima just aren't as impressive. She was able to survive mortal wounds, go toe to toe with the darkness devil, probably the strongest devil we've ever seen in the series, and was able to control people, hybrids, and fiends to beat the gun devil, who was teased to be the big bad of the whole series. Makima eats. War Devil did know the enemy in the first chapter, but that was only someone who got the powers from a contract with a devil rather than an actual devil, so about maybe 10 to 20% of an actual devil's power. Since then, the only enemy she's faced is the girl she's possessing, and sometimes she f loses. Now, you may say this is inconsistent, but I have a good amount of confidence in this theory of mine that may help explain this. So the reason the War Devil, eventually just call her Yoru, is out of balance is because she wants Chainsaw Man. And why? Okay, this video is kind of already drowning in Chainsaw Man lore, so I'll try to make this quick. <coughs> um. Then she adopted the Chainsaw Devil and called him Pochita. Denji died, but then Pochita became his heart so he can live his life and pursue his dreams. Turns out Pochita was a weakened form of the Chainsaw Devil that actually looks like this. Fun fact, devils never actually really die, they just go back and forth between hell and earth on a reincarnation cycle. Except if the Chainsaw Devil manages to eat that devil, then they erase from existence as well as a the concept they embody. So concepts like World War II, AIDS, and nuclear weapons are erased from this world because the Chainsaw Devil manages to eat those devils. And this is where I think your motivation comes in. Ooh, ooh, I got it. That was hard. That was more difficult than you may know. It's a good bet that when we think of war, we think of World War II. Planes bombing in London, D-Day, an angry art school reject, you know, the stuff you pay attention to in history class. 
hopefully for the right reasons. World War II brought on all kinds of atrocities and led to the development of the most powerful weapon that we can conceive of, which doesn't exist in this world anymore. And ever since the Cold War in the 80s, the threat of assured nuclear annihilation has always been in the back of the mind of the populace. It might wane here and there, but we gotta realize that we are two key turns and a button press away from the world looking like Dr. Stone. And Chainsaw Man takes place in the 90s, which is before another grim reminder of the consequences of war. But without those things, what is really war to us? We don't fear conflicts like the American Revolution or Julius Caesar's invasion of everything, because those are so long ago that they no longer permeate our minds. And even things like July 4th make us look favorably on a concept. So without the most widespread war in history, or the threat of that Terminator 2 scene that haunts my nightmares, what is war to us? Why would we be afraid? Devils gain power based on the fear of their embodied concept, but since war isn't as terrifying in that world as it is in ours, the devil of war might have lost some of her juice. We saw the hell that can rot from the fear of darkness and control, and she just can't match up. And I'm guessing she isn't like that very much. So her ultimate goal is to find Chainsaw Man and make him cough up the concept of nuclear bombs. And she's possessing this girl because it's said that Chainsaw Man is a kid that goes to her school. A perfect plan. So the story now mainly follows Asa as she tries to come to term with her possession by Yoru and try to placate her want for Chainsaw Man to gain her freedom. Denji doesn't even show up till six chapters into part two, and he still shares a lot of panel time with Asa. Sure, as the manga's going on right now, their paths are starting to converge, but we're still getting everything from Asa's perspective. So it's safe to say that Denji, the Chainsaw Man, is now no longer the protagonist of Chainsaw Man, and I think that's great. Even though most of the first part was only shown through Denji's perspective, I still think Fujimoto does a great job expanding this world. Denji could not get two shits about how devils work, or that Nazis, thankfully, have been erased from existence. All he cares about is tearing and grabbing some ass. And that's okay because we like Denji, but I think after a while, he may have gotten stale. Of course, we see by the end of the first act that he's not a completely static character, but he does have some quirks that may get old after a few hundred chapters. Fujimoto did the smart thing of shifting our perspective to see more of this world. We're seeing the world through Asa's eyes, and to be fair, it's not like she's any less of a loser than Denji is. You can make the argument she's even more based on her total lack of riz. Bro, how do you get Denji of all people not to fold, dog? If anything, Asa is a foil to Denji. Denji is a wild child who is often looked down upon by others and got his powers from a special relationship he had with his devil. Asa is your typical schoolgirl who looks down on others and got her powers from a parasitic relationship she had with the devil. Denji and Bochita showed us the good that a human devil relationship can bring, but Asa and Yoru show us that devils still ain't nothing to fuck with. So in the end, Chainsaw Man is no longer about Chainsaw Man and I'm all for it. I'm sure we'll still see Denji and his single father shenanigans, but I'm happy to go along with this mystery and intrigue that Asa and Yoru bring to the story. Yes, I know I could get more views being toxically negative towards a story where a female protagonist replaces a male one, but I have class and talk to women sometimes. But let's all band together and agree that the real goat of the story is the future devil, because the future rules. Thanks for watching.